Hey everybody, welcome. I know that many of you are brand new to the channel. We've been adding about a thousand new subscribers a day this week, which is awesome. And I'm so excited not only for the growth of the channel, but for the growth of our community, because that's what this is. Vlogging through history is not me. It's this incredible community that now numbers almost 270,000 subscribers. And I, from time to time, like to take a little bit of time just to say welcome to our new folks, but also to take some time to introduce myself because I don't necessarily always say a lot about myself and my background and I get a lot of common questions that get asked. And so for any of you who are brand new to the channel, uh, now that I've said welcome, I wanna just take some time to introduce myself a little bit and uh, maybe even share some things that those of you who have been a part of the channel, uh, even for a year, might not have heard me share before. So I'm going to take some time to do that. This might be, I don't know, a 10 or 15 minute long video, so I hope you'll stick around. First of all, my name is Chris. Uh, I am 44 years old. I have a beautiful wife, Tara, and three kids, Rachel, Caleb, and Eli, who live with me in our home in Northeast Ohio. We live very near to a town called Youngstown, Ohio. It's about halfway between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. And uh, we've lived there all our lives. I, I've moved around a little bit. We lived in Western Pennsylvania for a while where my daughter was born. But for the most part, Northeast Ohio has been home for our whole lives. My family originally comes from Eastern Kentucky, uh, back a few generations. That's something you will hear me talk a lot about. I'm very proud of my Kentucky heritage as well as my uh, English and Scottish and Welsh heritage and some Irish and some other things, German as well. Uh, but uh, I did go to college uh, to be a history professor. That was my goal. Uh, I majored in history. My goal was to teach at a university. Uh, life took a different turn uh, for me, and so I've actually never worked full-time in a history field. For the last nine years, I have been uh, a speaker for an organization called Rachel's Challenge, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that work with Rachel's Challenge later on in this video. Um, that's actually why I'm in this hotel room right now, right outside of New York City, uh, for a school where I'm speaking for Rachel's Challenge tomorrow. But uh, yeah, so my background is in history. Uh, I'm also a professional genealogist, have been for about 25 years, written a bunch of genealogy books uh, on various families and things like that, in the process of writing my first non-family history related book. Uh, it's going to be a Band of Brothers style uh telling of the story of the 20th Ohio Volunteer Infantry. Hoping that'll be done in about a year. I'm in the research phase right now, pouring through records all over the place, and I've, I've talked a little bit about that already, so I won't go back into all of that. I had an ancestor in that unit who followed Grant and then later Sherman uh, in the Western Theater of the American Civil War, so I'm very proud to be able to tell their story uh, through a number of different sources. Um, so, uh, with all of that in mind, there are a couple things you will hear me talk about all the time, and one is my family history. I've been doing family history on my own family for the better part of 30 years, uh, so I know a lot. I've got about 35,000 names in my family history file, and so you'll often hear me refer to relatives who were at significant events or had some connection to it. And it's not that that's unique to me. Everybody has those connections. I just happen to know about mine more than most people do. Uh, and I'm very proud of that, and I think it gives you a personal connection to history you might not otherwise have. Uh, so that's that. Why did I start this channel, Vlogging Through History? Well, it's kind of a long story, but I'll try to sum it up quickly. Uh, because I've been working with Rachel's Challenge for the last nine years, uh, it's not a full-time year-round kind of thing. Uh, it's very busy full-time in the fall. Uh, in past years, I've been on the road five or six days a week traveling all over the country uh, in like September, October, November. Uh, but then usually by the first of the year, it slows way down. And so for six or eight months of the year, I'm not doing a whole lot except for, for occasional events like this one. Uh, so I looked for something else to do to um, make some money, hopefully, but to keep me busy as well. So I started a a, a channel called The History Guy. Now, that name may sound familiar to you because many of you probably subscribe to a channel called The History Guy. History deserves to be remembered. Well, I started my channel a month before he started that channel. Uh, but mine was mainly focused on historical strategy gaming uh, with the occasional video where I would vlog my visit to a historical site. Uh, his channel took off and I started getting all kinds of people dropping by my channel saying, hey, why are you trying to steal his name? And no matter how much I tried to explain to them that my channel came first, it didn't matter because his was much bigger. And so I changed it to History Guy Gaming. 
I've had History Guy Gaming since December of 2016. And uh, in the summer of 2020, uh, I decided to branch off the two channels and take my, my historical live content where I would go to historic sites like Gettysburg and things like that and make a separate channel for that, which I called Vlogging Through History. Well, that was right at the beginning of the current pandemic. And so there was no travel. And so for months, the channel sat there. And after six months, I had uploaded a couple of old videos that I'd made in previous years that weren't real great. Uh, but by December of 2020, really nothing had happened with the channel. I had maybe 100 subscribers, and those were all people who came from my gaming channel. So on the advice of a bunch of people on the gaming channel, I decided to start doing some reaction videos. I never really thought that highly of reaction videos. I didn't think anybody would want to watch me saying, oh, wow, ooh, that's interesting. Oh, cool, you know? I didn't want it to be like that. So I decided if I was going to do reaction videos, I was going to add something of value. I was going to make it worth people's time because everybody's time is important. And so I wanted to turn it into something valuable. And so uh, a couple of the early ones I did were about things like the American Civil War. Uh, the American Civil War, if there's one area that I would consider myself to be an expert, uh, it would be the American Civil War. I've studied it all my life. I've got, I don't know, three or four hundred Civil War books in my library at home. I read probably a dozen or more every year. Um, uh, just something I've always been passionate about, uh, which is why I'm writing the book about the 20th Ohio and the Civil War. Um, so I did a few videos about that. I did some Sabaton reactions, and holy cow, it took off. And within a month, I had over a 1,000 subscribers. And within, I think, two months, I was up to 10,000 subscribers. And I thought, wow, this is pretty cool, you know, because on my gaming channel, after two years, I had 4,000 subscribers. Uh, it was really hard work and really slow going. And so I expected it to be the same way with this channel. But it went nuts. And the reaction videos seemed to be really popular. And uh, I, st I started doing reactions in December. And by, I think, the end of May, I had hit 100,000 subscribers, which just blew away any expectations that I had. Uh, things slowed down a little bit since then, but on average, we add, add about 300 new subscribers a day. But we're in one of those moments right now uh, because of my reaction to Ben Shapiro's presidential tier list video where things have taken off again. Uh, a couple of things about the channel that you'll notice. Number one is I do not tolerate people being disrespectful or unkind to each other. And I'll explain uh, more about my background uh, talking about kindness uh, later on. But that's why one of the reasons you'll notice that it seems like our channel is more friendly than others because people have come to expect that I will not tolerate that. And I, I have no trouble banning someone from commenting. I have no trouble deleting comments if I think it's a one-time thing. I also, for the most part, don't really want modern politics discussed. I have kind of a personal standard of uh, post-1990 being off limits. Now, here and there, I've broken that rule and I've strayed a little bit, like with some recent videos about uh, what's going on in Ukraine. I feel like that's a situation that warrants it, but at the same time, still trying to observe it as an objective person as best I can. You'll hear me talk a lot about biases because everyone has biases. Your background, the place that you grew up, uh, your financial situation, uh, your personal religious beliefs, your um, your political beliefs, your racial uh, makeup, um, the things you've gone through in your life and things that have happened to people in your life are all going to inform how you're biased. And there's nothing wrong with that. What bothers me is when people claim not to be biased. And so I try very, very hard to acknowledge my biases whenever possible. It doesn't mean I'm not blind to it sometimes. I, I will acknowledge I'm biased. Uh, we all are. Uh, but hopefully we can see through that. I, I have total respect for people who believe differently than I do, who have different politics than I do, um, any of that stuff. As long as we can be civil to each other and as long as we can be educated. And you'll see another thing I don't really like very much is when people spread misinformation. Uh, so if you post something that I know is not accurate, I may ask you, hey, can you give me um, some proof of that, some documentation? I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying, you know what? There's a lot of times I've learned from people. People have commented on, on videos about things I've said and corrected me and they were right. 
And I will acknowledge that and I'll pin that comment in many cases. Uh, I do not always know everything. I absolutely do not. Uh, and so if you correct me and you can back it up, I'll acknowledge it. But if you say, well, this is not true, and I say, well, hey, can you give me some proof, and you can't come up with any, well, then, you know, that's what it is. Um, so we're all about trying to stick to the facts as best we can. Now, there's not always facts available in certain cases, but that's okay. Uh, so uh, welcome to our community. I hope you enjoy yourself. Uh, divergent opinions and backgrounds and ideas are most welcome. Let's have healthy, strong debate about things, but let's be civil to each other. That's the only thing I ask. Now, the last thing I want to share a little bit, um, well, a couple of things. Uh, one of them, I, I get, there's some common questions I get all the time, and so I'll try to answer those real quick. Uh, I've already answered what the area I consider myself most expert in. Probably after the American Civil War, it would be um, the Wars of the Roses, Medieval Britain. Uh, the British monarchy is something that I know a lot about. The United States president, you'll see a lot of content here about that. Uh, and you'll also notice that I do, uh, you know, the, the reaction videos have grown this channel. I acknowledge that most of you are here because of reaction videos. So I will always do reaction videos. There will never be a time where I say, well, I'm not doing that anymore. That said, this channel was never created for reaction videos. So for me, personally, reaction videos are a means to an end. They help me grow the channel, but my passion is still the historic site videos. It's going to places like the Somme battlefield. It's going to Gettysburg. It's going to Arlington National Cemetery and telling people's stories. That's what I'm passionate about. I still have 18 videos to go live from my visit to France at the end of January. Uh, I have a whole series of like eight videos to post from Arlington National Cemetery that I haven't gotten up yet. Uh, I've got a video from New Mexico from last week. Uh, and in five weeks, I am on my way to uh, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, Luxembourg. Yes, I'm going to go to all four of those countries in six days. Uh, and I'm going to be shooting a bunch more content for the channel. So I'm excited about that. I will be posting a video soon giving you the details of my trip once I get them finished off. All right, so uh, so those are a couple of things I'm really passionate about. World War I uh, is an area of great interest to me, and I, I hope to get myself to the place where I consider myself an expert on the Great War. I'm not there yet. It'll be years before I am. There's so much information, so much for me to learn yet that I don't know, but I, I'm trying to get there. That's one I'm going to study a lot uh, for years to come. All right, so one thing I've never really talked about in detail, in depth, uh, is my work with Rachel's Challenge. So I want to take a little time to do that. I don't want to do the whole presentation for you or anything like that, but I allude to it a lot, so it helps if you know the background. So um, here in the United States, on April 20th, 1999, we had at the time what was the worst school shooting in American history. Uh, and it was the worst school shooting until Virginia Tech. And it was the worst high school shooting until a couple of years ago with what happened down in Parkland in Florida. Um, so it was one of those events in my life. I was 21 years old when Columbine happened. Columbine became synonymous with school shootings. And everything got compared to that after. And it's one of those events right up there with 9-11, the Oklahoma City bombing, the shuttle Challenger exploding, President Reagan being shot, things that I remember where I was when I heard about it. The Gulf War in 1991 is another one. Uh, I remember everything about the day that Columbine happened. Uh, and I watched the funeral of the first student who was killed. Her name was Rachel Joy Scott. She was 17 years old. She was a junior at Columbine. She was sitting outside eating lunch with a friend. Uh, both of them were shot. Rachel was killed. Her friend Richard survived, but he's paralyzed from the waist down. He's in a wheelchair. Uh, and as I watched Rachel's funeral, which incidentally had the highest ratings in the history of CNN to that point in history. Uh, so this was an event that a lot of people experienced. Uh, as I watched her funeral, I found myself in awe of this young woman uh, based on the things people were saying about her. About a year later, her mom and dad wrote a book called Rachel's Tears, and it shared a lot of the story of her life. And there were immediately a lot of parallels between her and a girl like Anne Frank, because Rachel, like Anne, had left behind these diaries. One of them was in her backpack. It's got a bullet hole through the middle of it. I've, I've held it in my hand. It's you know just amazing to hold something like that in your hand. And, 
And what was inside of these diaries was wisdom beyond a 17 year old, beyond most adults, uh, insight into her life. These, uh, these, this knowledge that she wasn't going to live to be very old. And, uh, as someone who is a Christian, uh, and who believes very strongly in the supernatural and in, uh, things that we can't explain, uh, there's a lot of that in Rachel's story. But, um, what really blew me away was her character. This was a girl who made it her life's mission to make other people's lives better. Uh, in fact, she wrote an essay about that not long before she died, and that essay became the basis for what we call Rachel's Challenge. And in this essay, she, she one of the things she said was, I have this theory that if one person can go out of their way to show compassion, it will start a chain reaction of the same. She believed that going out of your way to have a positive impact on another person's life, to show them that they matter, that they that you care, that you're interested, and that you want to be there for them, can have a ripple effect, and that will impact the lives of people you will never meet. And Rachel's challenge has become the evidence of that. We have literally seen her story impact millions of lives, um, and we share some of the stories of some of the things she did. There was a, a young man named Adam, for example, who I got to meet a couple years ago. Adam, great guy. Um, born with special needs, the kind of special needs that meant that he was different than most of the other kids. He looked different, he talked different, he walked different than most students. Got bullied a lot in school. And there was one particular day at Columbine, a school of like 2,000 students, where he was being bullied in the hallway and Rachel happened to see this happening. She didn't know Adam at the time, but she saw what was happening and wouldn't stand for it. So she came down, stood up for him, and became a friend to Adam after that. And, and she died just a few months later. And when Adam told Rachel's family about the story of the day that she stood up for him, he said, you know, I never told Rachel that I had already made up my mind that I was going to take my own life because of what was happening. Rachel literally saved his life by standing up for him. And so the whole point of Rachel's challenge is that the little things we say and do, they matter. Because a lot of times people are going through stuff that we don't see, that we're not aware of. And yeah, you know, words, we all grew up, uh, at least I did, with uh, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Uh, but the fact is that, yeah, words on their own, they don't feel like a big deal when you're complimenting somebody or you're insulting somebody. Not a big deal, but those words, when they get mixed in with all the other stuff a person's already going through, they can magnify the stuff they're going through and little things become big things. Uh, and so, yeah, what Adam was going through, uh, most people didn't know how serious it was, but that little thing Rachel did by standing up for him magnified uh, good in his life. And likewise, those guys bullying him could have magnified the bad and pushed him towards taking his own life, which is where he was headed. Uh, so that's just one tiny little part of it. But the point of Rachel's challenge is the idea that compassion and kindness can change the world. Uh, and very often when I do assemblies like the ones I'll do here tomorrow in New York, you'll have kids in tears. Now, these are kids that weren't even born yet when Columbine happened, but they connect to this story. And I get it because I connected to this story. I connected to this story so much that in 2005, uh, my wife and I named our daughter Rachel Joy after a girl we never met, Rachel Joy Scott. Now, since that time, Rachel's brothers and sisters have become friends of ours. Uh, Rachel's dad and stepmom are dear, uh, a part of our family. Uh, they really are, and they refer to us as a part of their family, and I really do feel like a part of the Scott family, and it's a privilege for me to share a story all over the country. I was in New Mexico last week. I'm in New York today. I've been in 48 states. Um, Rhode Island and Utah, only two I have left. Um, but it's a privilege for me to share a story that I have seen over and over and over again have a profound impact on people's lives, young people and old alike. So that's what Rachel's Challenge is all about. If you go to rachelschallenge.org, you can learn a whole lot more about it than I can share you know, in five minutes or so. But uh, that's me. That's who I am. Uh, now you know a little bit more about me. Please feel free to ask questions. I read every single comment. Yes, I have almost 270,000 subscribers, but I do read every comment. I may not respond to every comment. I just can't. You know, and, I, and, and if you email me or send me a message on Instagram and I don't respond, please don't be offended. I get dozens of those 
uh, every day, dozens of Instagram messages, dozens of emails from people every day. And, and the unfortunate reality is that as the channel grows to the size that it has, it makes that personal connection that much harder. But I do still try to read every single comment. So please know that I do see those. Uh, but if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below. I'm so glad that you have decided to be a part of this community. Uh, we do have a couple of ways that you can support the channel. Um, in the link of every video, you'll see a link to Patreon, which is the primary way I encourage people to support the channel. All of the money on Patreon goes directly to helping fund this channel, helping fund things like my trip to the Netherlands where I'm gonna be bringing you content about the guys from Band of Brothers uh, and other World War II content, things like that. So thank you in advance, and we'll see you again soon with some more content.